So we stole Beans' truck for the day. He instructed me to send him some photos. So we'll do that and then we'll make a YouTube video to this. Hey guys, so follow up video to the last video where we swamped the Yukon, the Denali. So we're back at Jesse's tonight, we're going to pull the seats out, pull all the carpet out. But first we have to go boost it, the battery's dead again, so I'm kind of worried that there's something going on with the uh, power seat controls. So I couldn't control the seat when we pulled it out of the water, and the battery was dead then too. So I'm wondering if that's what's draining it, if that's not the parasitic draw. Get the carpet out, take it to the coin wash, pressure wash it, try to hang it to the ceiling in here with some hooks, let it drip dry overnight. And then uh, also hopefully it doesn't have that misfire anymore since it's been sitting a couple days and it has been mild out, it's been in the teens. Yeah, it's been in the sun too, so. Yeah. Doesn't look too bad. So we'll go try and fire it up, see what we're working with, pull it into the garage so we can start tearing into it. This is try number one of firing up the Yukon. Got lights. <laughs> a little bit of a backfire. All in all, not that bad. No, I was expecting a lot worse. So one of us is going to do all of it. The other one's going to stand behind the Yukon. <laughs> yes. Here, okay. I'll, I'll I'll give you the air truck when you need it. Okay. I'll be standing here with that. Okay. Are you are you videotaping now? Oh yeah, yeah. It's just recording. Okay. I'm going to go stand right here and do my safety squint. And I see the guys do like a trail along the ground to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, did we just start a fire? Yeah. Hose? Find out. We're gonna put the lighter. Oh, it's the lighter. <laughs> I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. Okay, kick it real quick. Nope. Son of a bitch.
we got the intake off. Uh, there's thankfully no water in the intake, which is a good sign because if we picked up any water, there should have been some in this baffle here, and it's dry. The filter is a little damp, so I think part of the problem was that thing was wet. The manifold leak is worse. We did just have some doorman clamps on there as like a temporary fix that sort of became a permanent fix. The problem that we're having right now that we're really not pleased with is this. That, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little milky. So we definitely got some water in the transmission, which we were kind of afraid of. The main thing that we really need to fix is uh, this disaster. It is, it's been sitting with the windows open for a couple days, but it's just, it's, been, it's too, oh my God, there's still water in the freaking in the door panels. The seat, we can't move the seat right now. Hoping it's a blown fuse from a short circuit. So we're gonna keep plugging away, diagnosing. We're gonna rip the seats out and uh, get the carpets out. Go wash them and then continue on with everything else. Right on, so we've got the interior stripped on the Yukon. Um, where's that headlamp, Jesse? Right here. Beauty. Cute. <coughs> so, that's what we're dealing with. A couple puddles. I popped the grommet here for the shifter cable out so that the water will drain a little bit out of the floor pan it already has actually drained considerably a little bit here a little bit over there so maybe I have to soak that up with some other means a lot of carpet in these trucks i don't uh i definitely don't suggest swamping them like we did mm -hmm. um we got the bead reseated as you saw in the video we've got the battery out in, uh, we're about to charge that puppy. We had it on the trickle charger for a little bit, but we had to budget our our power consumption when we were running the compressor. Don't mind the spray foam that's from Beans. He had his can explode in the back of the truck. All in all, it doesn't look like the sub got wet, believe it or not, or not soaked anyway. You can see the water line on the bottom of it isn't too high. Yeah, there it is. So, a little bit of mud on it, but I think it might be dust as well. The amp was nice and high out of the water as well, so there won't be any issues with that. Had everything, uh, it's kind of here drying, had the propane heater going. The panels, this cardboard box that for some reason had a brand spanking new caliper in it that was float, well not floating, but in, in the back, bobbing around. So... Just needs a little bit more cleanup. I don't know how uh, Fussy Beans wants us to get with uh, getting the mud out of here, but now we're gonna go, it's 1.30 in the morning, but we're gonna go take the carpet to the coin wash and power wash it. And we'll, get some McDonald's. And get some McDonald's. I got the munchies. Yeah, Je it's the late night munchies for Jesse. All right, well, we'll go move that shit to the back of the Silverado and uh, get a move on. Eventually.
It is one week later. We're back working on the Yukon. Um, Beans and Jesse have got the rear lift in, the Amazon lift. It's about three inches taller, maybe a little bit more, because it's also got uh, it's got springs in it now, heavy duty springs for towing. So we got the ramps, new battery, because the last battery, uh, the cap actually popped off of it. And I guess some muddy water got into the cell and that's what killed that battery. We got some new transmission fluid, we got some fresh synthetic oil. It was 50% off at Canadian Tire, so why not? New oil filter, uh, fuel or fluid pump, an extraction pump to get the transmission fluid out so we don't have a bloodbath on the floor of Jesse's garage. Guys are just doing the front control arms while we're at it because those bushings are friggin' cooked. Let's get to her. Jesse's been working on suspension shit. Beans and I have been hard at work getting the interior back together. So we're gonna cut the rear carpet eventually so that the just top half back there is bed lined and then we'll turn the rest of the carpet into a sort of bed rug just to kind of keep things clean when we're not putting junk in the back. And uh, next step is to put the interior plastics in. Well, we're gonna put the seats in Get them positioned with the Power Wheels battery till Beans get some new uh, control uh, controls for the seats because they, they they blew when they uh, when the water got to them. Why did water get to them? I don't know why water got to them. Somebody told me to send it when I pulled up to a freaking puddle. Oh, he's hiding now. <laughs> Just keep making our way this way. With the it made a great story. It did make a great story. But uh, yeah, things are going well. Uh, the carpet actually just came out it. not too bad. You no, just it. no, things are going well in the interior. I don't care. You just jinxed it. I just jinxed it. God damn it! Never say things are going well. So just never say those words. So we'll keep going on the interior. Jess is going to keep going on the suspension. This thing needs to go for a front lift and an alignment tomorrow, and then Beans is immediately driving it like a thousand kilometers. To Nevada. He's going to SEMA. That was, what, two weeks ago now? So we got her running. Tightened up the clamps on the uh, manifolds. But our problem now is that the truck's not charging properly. It's only at, sitting at 11.7 volts. Upon further inspection, we determined that at least, well, one coil was behaving like it was bad, and then we immediately broke two plug wires without even trying. Like, I think Jesse barely even touched it, and it just, it snapped. I like to break things. So the plug wires are toast. So we're going to do plug wires. The alternator is likely toast. It's only charging at 11.7 volts. We got the front half of the interior back in. Um... Right now the power seats involve uh, hot wiring with the power wheels battery, but it's adjusted to beans so he can drive it comfortably at least. Uh, we're going to leave the back half naked for now. We're going to end up cutting the carpet here and then rocker or uh, roll on bed liner for the rest of the way. And we'll cut the stock carpet as well so that it comes in and out real easy like a, a bed rug almost. 
So if Beans wants to throw an engine in the back or something like that, it's just pull the carpet out and you don't have to worry about getting oil on the carpet. Other than that, the new upper control arms are in. The camber is a little off. The guys have decided that they're going to tackle the... Didn't wear his glasses. <laughs> yeah. The, the guys have decided now that uh, we're going to... Well, maybe not me, but they are going to tackle the front lift themselves now there too. They are. Jesse. Mostly Jesse. Jesse's I'm going here, to attend. Here, Beans will be here for emotional support. Yes. And then uh, kind of cleaned up some of the plastics when we were putting them back in. So, Penzo L Synthetic was on sale for 25% or 56% off, actually, is what it was. That's such a weird number. It's a, it's a ridiculously weird and specific number. I was looking at all their flyers like that. It's like not 30, it's like 32%. 24%. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they figure it out, but <laughs> so this thing's actually looking pretty beastly. So the outside will probably never be cleaned again, but the interior is meant to be a nice place to live. So gotta clean up a few a little bit of mud here and there. So, all in all, why. oh yeah, CB Whip is on too, and uh, we even ran the cable while we were at it. I mean, the carpet was out in the front, so we ran it into the center console, and we had, what, like a good like 24 inches of slack by the time we got there, so. 18 foot cable, or is it 24 foot? I can't remember. It's long. Longer than 18. But yeah, semi-truck whip. CB will work good. It's on its way. We didn't get a chance to do the fluids. That'll be another night. It's almost 2 in the morning, so I guess we'll uh, reconvene on a different night. Go to work in the morning. You go to work in the morning, yeah? Oh, that's going to hurt. Maybe not. I'll probably feel bad. <laughs> so I didn't want to leave the video at that. I was going to throw the outro on it while I was editing, and I said, ah, I can't. There's, there's literally no outro, no explanation. Not much has happened with the truck. That was filmed in November. It's now March. Uh, long story short, after that, the truck was running. Uh, Beans and Jesse got together the day after I filmed that last bit. They dropped the transmission fluid. They managed to get the truck to Beans' mechanic, which is not too far from his place. They did a full fluid change on the front. The front diff was literally water. Uh, only in it the rear diff had mostly water in it the transfer case had mostly water in it <laughs> so they they did a full fluid change the problem is when you don't do a fluid flush on a transmission when you get water in it you don't get all the water out of it more on that beans drives a truck to work after it's running again it's touch and go. We're pretty sure it's a fuel issue at this point. Likely the fuel filter is clogged now that after they uh, they drained the fuel tank using the fuel pump. So probably grabbed a bunch of dirt, uh, sediment that was in the bottom of the tank, clogged the fuel filter. If it's not the filter, the regulator, or the fuel pump. Well, we'll do the regulator next. It's the next cheapest part, and then the fuel pump being the most difficult and expensive part of the fuel system. The problem went after the day after Beans drove the truck to work, so his job that he has in town. He works two weeks up at uh, a mine site. Um, he's two weeks at home. When he's at home, he's got a, another job that uh, trying to save up to buy a house. And anyway, at this job, they put a set of wheels on the truck, got it aligned. Drives the truck home that night, going to bring the truck to Jesse's house, going to diagnose the misfire. All of a sudden, the transmission's all neutrals. Park is the only thing that works. No reverse, no drive, no 4, 3, 2, 1, nothing. Nothing. So, start doing a little bit of digging. Turns out that when you get water in your transmission, if you don't flush it properly, you will burn the clutch plates. So... Clutch plates probably weren't healthy to begin with because it is a very high mileage vehicle. We're going to do a rebuild. The parts are in my dining room. They came in from Summit Racing in literally two days. 
It's amazing because that that's cross border. Um, so much for the blockades. Um, other, uh, that's pretty well it at this point with with the truck where it sits. It's sitting dead outside of Jesse's place. So there's going to be more with that most likely once the snow melts. Uh, Beans is also busy when he's home with his property maintenance job that he has working for. This guy's got like four jobs right now. So um, once the snow melts, the property maintenance will slow down. We should all have time to be able to get together, drop the 4L65 out of that thing, and do a complete refresh on it. All new parts going in. And then it should drive again. The only problem is the misfire. Either way, the goal is, and we're going to do it, we're going to get it working. So stay tuned for more on that. As always, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel like. If you dislike, please tell me why. It's the only way I'm going to get better at making these videos. So thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.